All right, in this video, I'll be showing you how to take your line drawings from Rhino 3D to Illustrator. So what you want to do is grab all your objects that you want to export like this, and then go to File, go to Export Selected. Once you go to Export, you want to make sure you are in the folder you want to save your file to. Change the Save As Type file format from Rhino 3D down to Illustrator, which is right here, and then save it, whatever you want to name it. Then click Save. You get this AI exporter option. Snapshot of current view, you can keep that preserve model scale you can preserve the scale that it exports to color rgb is fine for now and hatches exported as solid fills we don't have hatches but you can keep that turned on for now once that saves open up illustrator from here you just want to go to file open and you're going to find the file you want to use mine is right here and then i'm going to click open now you might notice that we're on a portrait size board and we want to change this to a 24 inch by 24 inch so what you want to do is go to file go to document setup then from here, go to edit artboard. And from here, if you click right here, this kind of artboard two title, you will be able to change the name. I'll just call it board one. And then I'll change my width and my height right here it's to 24, not points, but inches. So you just do this and you go to 24 inches and it's converting it to this point system, but uh, that should be correct. Now the reason it's showing point is because my unit system is in point and not in inches, but click okay. Um, if you go to document setup, you can go ahead and change it from points to inches. And I'm just gonna show you how to do that. Click okay. And if you double click it again, you'll see that it actually is in 24 inches. But in case you didn't do that or don't know what's going on, it defaults to points, okay? Now, once we did that, we can just get out of this by clicking escape on your keyboard and then zooming in. Now, the image is very, very small. What you wanna do is you can select it all and scale it. Two things to note is if you scale by just dragging these corners, it just distorts it. To prevent that, you just hold shift on your keyboard and it locks it into the ratio that it currently is in. Now, if you select your object, right click, go to transform, you can go to scale right here. Okay, and you can see scale strokes and effects is turned on, meaning that if I was to uniformly change this to, let's say 300% of the size, it's gonna scale the stroke uh, thickness, which is you know the line weight that we did in Rhino, but it's gonna do it in uh, Illustrator. It's just gonna make it much, much larger and it's gonna scale it by 300%. So click okay. And you see that it actually changed the line weight thickness. I'm gonna undo that, right click, go to transform scale once again, and unclick scales and strokes. You'll see that it doesn't change the line weights. Okay, uh, and that's really what we wanna do. So once you unclick it once, it won't do it anymore. So I'm just gonna make this much larger. Something like this seems fine. Now you'll notice our line weights are extremely thin and really hard to read. So how do we change this? Now, if you're new to Illustrator, there might be a few things that you're uh, not familiar with. One being the layer system and within the layer system, there's properties. Now this is very, very similar to Rhino 3D if you are familiar with that. Now you wanna go ahead and use your layer systems to select your objects and then uh, go ahead and use properties to change the properties of those lines. So for example, we already organized our line weight types in Rhino, right? So we have heavy, we have medium, we have light, and we have extra light hidden in construction. I can select the layers in Adobe Illustrator based off this, the layers I set up in Rhino, right? If I go ahead and select my heavy line weight, the way to do that is by clicking this circle, right? And it selects everything in that line weight. If I was to select this black line here, it shows me that it's in this light line weight layer. And the way you could tell is that there's this little square right here that says, this object is in this layer. That's all that it means. Uh, you can change this object to a different layer just by dragging this and moving it to the next layer down or up. And you can see that if I select it now, it says it's in this layer, right? And if I was to hide this medium line weight layer, that one disappears as well. So you can turn on and off these layers. I'm gonna go ahead and move that back to light line weight, okay? The first thing I'm gonna do is actually change all of the line weights except for the construction lines to black. I'm gonna hold shift and select the extra, so on and so forth. You just wanna keep holding shift to keep extending your selection, okay? Then go to properties. Now you'll see in properties, there's this bracket called appearance. You have a fill and you have a stroke. What that means is the fill is basically like a hatch, if you're familiar with that in Rhino, and then the stroke is the line weight color. So you see there's a bunch of question marks, meaning that there's multiple line weight colors selected for all these objects. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this. And I'm going to click this little, uh, I'm gonna click this kind of color palette over here. Actually, this one right here. And I'm gonna select black, okay? And that sets everything to black. And if I unclick, you'll notice that everything transformed to black except for the construction lines. Okay, this is looking much better, but it's still a little bit too light. We're gonna start with the construction lines. We can go ahead and select 
construction lines and I'm gonna change this to a darker gray. So in under appearance, I'm gonna click the stroke color, which is right here. And I'm slightly gonna increase this K value. So it's slightly darker. That seems good. Look at it. Yeah, that's better. But uh, I'm gonna go back to layers because I unselected, reselect everything. And now the next thing you wanna do is change the line weight, right? To do that, you need to click stroke the actual word. You can see it's got a dashed line underneath it. So click stroke. You can see that the, the weight is very, very small. And so you wanna go ahead and change that to something like, I don't know, 0.5 or something. Uh, and then now it's very visible. And so you wanna do that for all the layers. So let's go ahead and do that. I changed the hidden line weight to 0.075 and it's getting kind of cluttered. So I'll just have to come back and make sure that it's not reading super dark as I do this. Okay, so go back to layers. Um, I'm gonna check the heavy line weight, make sure it's not super thick. Go to strokes again. Uh, 1.5 seems actually pretty good. It might be too thick, but we'll see what happens at the end. Select the medium. Change this to, we'll go ahead to one. That seems fine. Layers light we'll change that to let's say 0.75 that seems doable and then extra light will change this to about 0.25 okay so that seems fine now the hidden seems pretty thick so i'll go ahead and select the hidden and change this to 0.25 actually for now that seems better it's still reading quite light, but um, you know, it just really depends on your preference. This is not too bad, it's not super cluttered, but some of the edges are reading kind of weird. Uh, I would probably make some adjustments to it, but for now, this is probably a good place to stop. In terms of line weights, uh, obviously you need to test and make sure everything reads as well as it needs to be. The next thing I wanna add is text. So just go to this type tool right here. And there's two ways of doing this. One, you can drag a box and then write a paragraph. I don't suggest doing that for now. I just wanna use the text for labeling, so I'm just gonna click once and then type whatever I wanna type. In this case, I wanna type B1 dot period. Now, I haven't mentioned this before, but you can click Control plus and Control minus to zoom in and zoom out. So I'm gonna Control plus to zoom into my text. If I select it, uh, I can create a new layer for the text, clicking this plus sign right here. And I'll name this text, just so I can control it on a layer. And I'll move it all the way up just by dragging it above the construction line layer like this. You see that kind of heavy line. Now, if I select this B1, you'll see it's in hidden lines. I'm just gonna drag it up to text and then I can control it from there, okay? Now I'm gonna select this once again. In properties, there's a few things that you can change. The stroke controls an outline around the text. We don't wanna control that because really what a text is is a fill for the most part. By default, it's a fill and not a line. So if I go ahead and change this to um, I don't know, something like this, and click out of it, you'll notice that it changed the color. But I'm gonna undo that, I think black is fine. Now I do wanna show you how to change the font. You can just come down here and select whatever font you want. I'm just gonna type Times New Roman, why not? And then I'm gonna change that from regular to italics, maybe move it up to 0.24. And really what I wanna do is just indicate the boxes so we can read the project a little bit better. Uh, B1 will be this corner right here. That'll be the, the four by four inch square. I'm gonna copy this in clockwise fashion. I'm just gonna name these boxes uh, in different numbers. So we B2, B3, B4, and B5. Uh, so let me just do that. Now I have all five boxes labeled as B1 to B5, and I wanna just label them in exploded so we can understand what we're reading here. All I'm gonna do is copy the text to the boxes that it corresponds to. Now, if you did wanna edit any lines, like for example, it looks like I'm missing my actual solid line here. All you need to do is click this solid fill arrow, which is direct selection tool. And once you click that and then click on a line, you'll notice that there's a path and you can go ahead and edit that. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this line right here. You can see it's poly points. Let me zoom in, maybe it's clear. Okay, and I wanna click this line right here and you could drag it. All I wanna do is just drag it to this corner and I can edit that line, okay? Uh, you shouldn't really be moving and editing your lines here, but in case you did see a mistake like that, it should be pretty easy to do. Okay, so that looks relatively good. Make sure you are in this selection tool and not the direct selection tool. Now we can go ahead and move our drawing as we see fit. Now go ahead and test your line weights, make sure it reads clearly. I think this reads clearly for now. Now the last thing I wanna mention is if you wanna create a new file and copy this stuff over, if you go to file, go to new, 
you'll be able to create a new sheet here. Again, you could change your units from points to inches. So you wanna change that to 24 by 24 and then click create. So you have a new untitled file, right? So you wanna go back to your other file right here and then you wanna copy and paste this by selecting everything and then control C, right? Or you can right click and copy just like that and then go to your new file. And now from here, you can control V, but once you do that, just do note that everything got merged to this layer one and it, it's not separated in the previous layers. A way to prevent that is by undoing that. And you wanna come up to these three bars in the layer menu, select that, and you wanna to go to paste remember layers. Now what this means, it's gonna paste the layers that it recognizes from the previous file to this new file. So I'm gonna click that, select it. And once you go back to the errors, you'll notice that it's check mark as on okay so you can turn it on and off now i'm going to go control v to paste it in you'll notice that all the layers are as they should be so simple as that i'm going to close this it's not needed so you want to save as save on your computer or your creative cloud whatever you choose i'm going to save on my computer again you want to pick where you're saving this which folder and then there's two ways of doing it if you want to keep it native to illustrator i do suggest having a dot ai or if you want to see it as a PDF, you can go to Adobe PDF. Once you save it like this, uh, it is editable as a PDF. But what it allows us to do is view it in any PDF reader and then print as a PDF. Click save. You'll get these default settings. Just leave them as they are. Click save PDF. Now, once you open up the file, you might notice that the line widths don't seem correct. Now you can control minus and control plus to zoom in and out. They seem kind of off. And if they do go to edit, go to preferences, and then make sure you have enhanced thin lines turned off, which is right here. Turn off enhanced thin lines, scroll down to okay, right here, click okay. And now you'll notice that the line widths look much, much better. And I do suggest that everyone to check your preferences and make sure you have enhanced thin lines turned off. Now that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I hope that helped and thanks for watching.